is. We're going to be looking at swords, kind of going over the plant care that they require and um, all the info, having to do with them, and then we'll touch into some Q Q and A stuff. And uh, before we get into that, uh, Aqua Apprentice on Instagram asks, "What's good, H two O? How was Reefa Palooza for you? It was very good. Um, I met a lot of people, met a couple of the fans. It was very, uh, very nice time." Hung out with a bunch of other YouTubers and or business owners in the uh, industry. And uh, it was it was a lot of fun. So if anybody didn't go, uh, it kind of sucks you missed it. I did live stream a bunch of it. Uh, you can check it out on uh, YouTube and Facebook. That video is up. Um, and uh, you can take a look at it. And uh, yeah, it was really cool. Uh, what's up, Floyd? How's it going? Actually, I don't think the no the whole the whole convention stream isn't on YouTube. It's on Facebook. Maybe I'll upload it uh, to YouTube so some people can watch that as well. Um, I just want to double check, make sure that we are live on YouTube because it's not showing that anybody's here just yet. But that's also because I'm probably late. Uh, would corkscrew va uh, va or would corkscrew grass be better for 20 gallon tall than uh, tall hair grass? Really depends on the look you're going for. Both would be fine for it. So let's just see. I just want to make sure. We're live on YouTube, right? You could see? I didn't get a notification. You didn't get a notification. Of course you didn't get a notification. You know why? Because YouTube sucks. Because YouTube does suck, and YouTube doesn't want to notify people. I never did. Freaking damn. Oh, okay. Now we got people in on uh, YouTube. Okay, so we're good. All right, cool beans. So what's up, uh, Floyd? What's going on, T Dunks? Jordan's Fish Room, AMA, Jenny, what's going on? Uh, good morning from Shark Bike Communication in Portugal. Welcome, JP Gomez. Thank you for joining. Um, what's up, Tater? Hello, Alyssa. All right, so we're good. So let's jump into this. Let's touch on the um, sword care and uh, kind of what swords need um, to grow. And uh, I'll show you a couple different kinds that I have. There's such a large variety of uh, sword plants, though. Um, I I don't even carry them all. There's so many different kinds. Um, so this is just going to be a couple of different ones that you can uh, see, and I'm going to show you a couple of different things about them, and uh, we'll get into it now. So, um, swords are a plant that uh, are in the rosette family. Basically, that was gross, Walter. Uh, they come from a they, they, they grow a lot like jungle vows. They have a center mass, uh, center root mass that they grow leaves out of. Um, the more the most common sword plant is probably going to be the Amazon sword, which is this guy right here. Right? And uh, this one actually isn't looking in the best condition, and I'm going to show you guys what you do with uh, a sword like this. But um, so when, when I get these in, they come in immersed because swords, they're slow growing. They don't uh, typically... Uh, gr are grown uh, submerged, so they're gonna they're gonna have to convert a bit. So let's go over what you would do if you get a sword and it's still converting like this one is. So <clears throat> one, you want a good substrate, right? Plant them in good substrate. You can actually trim the roots back a little bit on these when you plant, and uh, and that'll help them actually root better. Um, if you don't have a good substrate, like say Eco Complete or Seachem Fluorite. You could use something like root tabs, uh, which I sell on the website, which I'll show you what those look like real quick. Uh, they come in these little gel capsules right here. And there's other types of root tabs too. Fluval makes them, Seachem, I think Seachem makes them. Uh, but you basically, you plant these in, uh, in the substrate um, around the sword, not directly under it, uh, as well as other plants. But swords especially will uh, get a great benefit out of root tabs. Um, it basically just delivers some nutrients there for them to really spread out the roots, start growing properly, and all that good stuff. So uh, after you plant it, um, you may see some leaves like this, like this leaf is flopping over, it's broken there. That's clearly a bad leaf. Uh, you may get some yellowing leaves, like this one is slightly yellowing and browning around the edge. And um, so real quick. Uh, Alex asks, why wouldn't you place the root tab directly under it? Well, the reason being is when a plant grows, the roots are going to spread out, right? The roots don't go directly down. They spread out. Um, think of a tree, right? The tree's branches, they spread out. Same thing with the roots of a plant. Um, so if you put root, a root tab directly under it, only a little bit of the roots are going to get to it. But if you put a root tab, say, out here, away from the roots, 
as the roots grow out, they're going to grow into that and they'll be able to absorb all those nutrients. So, um, back onto what to do with, you know, immersed grown leaves and whatnot. So if you have a leaf like this flopping over, you just basically peel it back or trim it as close down to the rhizome or the, um, the root mass as you can, or the rosette. And that eliminates that leaf. Uh, pretty much anything that's very stiff, that's immersed growth, right? So that can all come out. So most of these, you could just take all these off here. And this isn't hurting the plant. This is actually doing it good, uh, some good. And you wouldn't do this if there was no submerged leaves on it, which I'm going to show you now. So you can see here, these more narrow leaves, and they're a bit translucent. These are the submerged forms and you can tell that because they're very they're they're a lot softer in texture they're a little bit see-through right so they're they're a little bit transparent and um they're they're just not as uh as kind of rigid as the other ones are so i mean essentially you can remove all these old rigid leaves that are all immersed grown right assuming that you have as long as you have a good leaf or two on here, you're good. So I peeled that this back all the way to this. So that big sword that was just here is now this little guy right here. But this is actually a really healthy sword now at this point because it has three leaves. There's actually three leaves here. Typically, I wouldn't trim back all the leaves until there's three leaves like that. So you could leave a couple of them on. They'll still do it all right. But it's best to get rid of those old leaves as fast as you can once you see new growth because now the plant's going to devote all of its energy into growing new leaves rather than trying to fix these old ones. Uh, so Daisy asks, how often should, should the plant be trimmed? So that's a good question. So I showed you basically what you do when you first get it in, if it has some immersed growth or if it has submerged growth, what you should do. Uh, you could also just leave those leaves on for a while, let it really adjust to your tank. Uh, for a couple of weeks until you really see new growth coming up and that would be good but then how often should you trim well a couple a couple of things so you should trim when it gets too big for your your scape or your tank right swords can get big as they as they continue to grow um, if leaves let's just say this plant was in my tank for a while and then this leaf started to brown or yellow at that point this leaf is dead there's no restoring this leaf it's best to just pluck it and get rid of it right um, that's a good time to trim it uh, and just routine maintenance getting rid of those older leaves you don't want to ever remove the center leaves from the middle of it you want to remove the outer leaves and that would do it some good I tied my entire sword onto the driftwood should I redo the planting yeah so Cheryl um, typically sword plants like to be in substrate if you tied it onto the driftwood close enough to where its roots can get into the substrate it probably will still do okay but it will definitely do better um, if you plant it so the rosette where the roots are right here is just under the substrate and you want to make sure you leave the top uh, exposed so the leaves can emerge from the uh, gravel or substrate or whatever you have so um, so yeah so this is uh, the regular Amazon sword um, these can actually get kind of large the, they'll, they'll continue to grow in size um, over the course of, uh, of you having them in your tank I had one that got massive. It was a, it was a different species of Amazon sword, um, but the leaves got as big as my head. So, what happened if you super glued it? Well, if you super glued the sword to your driftwood, uh, I would probably just leave it. Odds are you're gonna destroy it trying to remove it from it. Um, so if it's doing okay, it, it'll probably still grow. It's just not ideal, and I I like to tell you you know the ideal conditions, but you could do a lot of different things in the aquarium hobby um, that may not be ideal but it will still work for you um so really when it comes down to sword plants don't worry about the outside leaves look for the inside leaves see what they're doing that's really the the tell if the plant is healthy and what's going on with it and uh that's what you want to be looking out for so that's amazon sword uh low light sword plant it's kind of a good um a good like focal point in your in your scape and um, are there swords that stay short? So there are swords that stay short. Um, you'd have to do your research to try and figure out all the different varieties, but I will show you one that I have. So oftentimes a lot of people ask, how do swords propagate or how do you get make more or that there's this big, long, stringy thing coming off my sword? What What is it? And that's this thing right here. So this is actually a pygmy chain sword. 
These are small, smaller swords that are great for smaller aquariums. Uh, they could also carpet because the way these swords particularly pr reproduce is they send off runners as far as chain swords go. But most other swords actually reproduce by this thing. Um, it's pretty much just a, a, a big stem that comes out of the center of the plant. And it kind of looks like there would be like seed uh, balls on top, right? And um, basically on this particular plant, the seed balls are just to produce seeds. But on other plants, you'll actually see baby plants start to grow out from here. So you actually see little roots and then little leaves start to perk up and out. And um, it'll continue all the way up uh, until it just either you cut it off or it stops, you know, uh, it reaches the surface. Sometimes it'll stop. Um, but that's how most swords propagate. So if you ever see a long stem coming off your swords, that's good. That means that it's growing healthy, it's got nutrients, it's producing offspring, and um, you could trim them off at any point you want to. I typically just let them go until I have more than enough, and then I'll trim them down, take the, uh, take the individual baby plants and plant them around and let them really root in and stuff. But uh, this is Pigby Chain Sword, and uh, similar to the other one, it does have some immersed leaves on it. And, uh, you know, you could just pluck these off and um, this will actually help the plant in the long run. And uh, that's pretty much all the healthy new growth right there. There's a couple other leaves here, but they look fine for right now. So, yeah, so that's that's Pygmy Chain Sword. It stays small. Uh, it's a good carpeting plant if you want something. Uh, I would say it's a good carpeting plant for anything above 55 gallons. Um, Anything smaller than that, it's really going to be a little too big for the scapes in proportionate size, but um, it's still a good plan if you want to get a whole lot of it. What's the difference between immersed and submerged? So immersed is above the waterline, submerged is below the waterline. So when you put a plant, most plants are grown outdoors typically when, uh, regardless if it's me, a local fish store, whatever they order from a nursery that grows them outdoors because it's more efficient. Um, and what they do is they allow the plant to get outside the waterline and that will grow faster. Um, I put them in the tank here, they start converting, they start losing all those older leaves and growing new submerged leaves, so that's, uh, that's pretty much the difference there. Uh, how should they be treated when doing a water change? Should they be taken out? No, so you should never really remove plants uh, when they're rooted in there. They should just be left alone uh, to grow. Uh, plants do better when they're undisturbed. Um, the more you uproot them and move them around, the less they grow. Um, so it takes more time for them to establish and stuff. So you could just leave these be and uh, let them let them do their thing. Yeah. What's up? Uh, what day is it? Uh, first day. Okay, Wednesdays so are day one. It's a GH booster. Uh, GH booster is what? Calcium? Probably. What else? Uh, do it. Do a do a half dose on the two on those two tanks of, of GH. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Can potted plants be put in substrate? They can be. They're just not going to grow to their full efficiency. I tried putting swords in my goldfish tank once. They didn't last long. Yeah. Um. Sometimes sword plants really won't do well with goldfish. However, if you plant the swords first, and then introduce the goldfish at a later date if the swords have time to establish they'll probably do fine is that a deep t uh, blue 10 cube yeah that is actually that's going to be actually the tank that i'm going to be doing a lot of the photographs for the website on uh, on a lot of the plants so that's pygmy chain sword uh let's look at a couple other swords here um so swords are a good way to add color to your tank too that don't really require a ton of light or a ton of co2 or anything like that uh, here I actually have Red Rubin Sword, and um, this actually is not up on the website yet. Uh, I like to order plants for the first time in the tank. I keep them there for a while. I want to see how they behave if it's my first time trying them, and uh, make sure that it is a good plant. Um, see if it's going to be something that is going to melt right away, that something like that I need to keep in my tanks, or something that I could confidently ship out to somebody and know even if it does melt a little bit it'll still be okay and um, so far the red Reuben has been pretty well uh, with that all these older leaves here that I'm plucking off these are all the immersed leaves and they actually have yet to start to brown or yellow up but this could use a trimming uh, get rid of some of the older growth and now you can see the newer growth and 
it's probably not going to show on camera as red as it is, but this is a rather red leaf. Uh, it's going to probably look brown. It looks a little brown on camera, but it is uh, it is actually quite red. Um, and it's a very nice plant. It's got green veins that run through it, so it's got a nice little contrast to it. And uh, this is a good way to add color to your scape uh, without needing like highlight or a high tech tank or rare stem plants. You could get swords or crypts that uh, are easy to grow and provide a lot of color. So this is one of them, Red Reuben. Uh, what plant does well with cichlids? Uh, Anubis, Java Fern. We actually touched on Anubis uh, in one of our previous Water Change Wednesdays. You could go back on YouTube and take a look at that and you can do it, it pretty much the whole thing with the live stream we did for, for that. I just realized my lighting is very off too. I should move it. I blame Jake. It's all, it's all your fault. Okay. There we go. Oh, you look even more white than normal. Yeah, now it, oh, something tells me that's gonna fall. All right, I think it'll be all right. Water sprite, trim it, leave floating, and uh, it'll grow roots. Yeah, so uh, water sprite. Um, water sprite will actually grow new baby plants just from the leaves. I'm actually gonna do another video on that along with Java Fern and stuff. Jimmy says, "Hit that like button." Thank you, Jimmy. I appreciate it. All right, so that's red Reuben. And so all swords are pretty much uh, very similar in care. Pretty much what, what what I went over at the beginning of this video can be applied to all of these. Um, as far <laughs> as far as the swords that I've been uh, that I've dealt with in the past, um, there may be other swords that may vary in uh, in uh, in care and and stuff. But pretty much the basic stuff that you're probably gonna find. Um, is going to be all very relatively similar. So, so let's talk about this sword. So this is a, a rosette sword. That's actually the name rosette. I know that I was referring to the root mass as a rosette, but this is actually called a rosette sword. And uh, this is a new one that I've never really had experience with. Um, this is my first time having it, and I've been testing it out. So just for my initial uh, observation here, what I'll show you here, is the plant came in with these taller leaves here, and it looked like it would be a medium-sized sword plant. But all the new growth that's going on here, if I remove all these older leaves, let me show you what's actually happening here. And now... I don't know, maybe somebody can uh, clarify in the comments if, uh, if this ha has happened to them with this plant, but what it looks to be like is maybe this is a uh, dwarf um, sword plant because its leaves aren't growing super tall. This has been in the tank for a couple weeks now, and this is, this is the biggest growth that I got out of it. So... This might be a small sword plant, and if it is, that's really cool. But um, yeah, this is this is what I'm getting out of it right now. These may get big, bigger, they may not. But uh, this is really cool. Um, these actually have like little ruffles along their um their leaves. I'll try and show you here on camera. There's little ruffles right there. Little ruffles. You could see little ruffles right there. So um, it, it provides some texture. It's not like a smooth leaf like the other ones. And um, I mean, if it stays small like this, that's awesome. But I uh, guess we'll have to see. I'm gonna keep it in the tank a little bit longer, see if it does grow bigger. Uh, but if it stays small, it's a super cute sword for small tanks, which is really cool. Um, all right, what else, what else here? Went over the Amazon sword. Okay, so let's talk about one of the, probably the most selling swords next to the Amazon sword. Um, and that's the Kleiner Bar Sword. And um, this one actually is a little different than the, than the other swords here um, because this actually can be split from this, uh, this rosette here. So this is a, quite a large sword. This is all one sword. Um, and as you can see here, it has very green leaves here. That's how they normally come when I get them. But then you see this red leaf, right? And this is how they grow. They grow these red leaves, and they just look absolutely amazing. Uh, but this particular plant could probably be split into two or three different plants if I really wanted to sit there and break the um, the rosette that's that it's growing on. I kind of think 
that these grow uh, very similar to like Anubis through like a rhizome as well as a rosette. So you could kind of almost split these and break them apart, which is kind of cool. I've done it before, they've been completely fine. Um, but yeah, so this is Kleiner Bar. Thank you, JW. JW says hit that like button. I really appreciate it. Do you want me to throw all these bags up? Uh, yeah, I got all the names. You know where everything is? Yeah. Okay. Later, Jimmy. So, yeah, so... Kleiner Bar Sword is one of the more popular swords that I get in. Um, a lot of people like it. They order it out. It's a good, healthy sword plant from what I found uh, very minimal melting on it um, for a while uh, it's really hardy and it can handle a, a large variety and it will get red leaves under just medium light uh, young Kevin says you have, uh, hey Justin I got Monte Carlo any info you could give me on it to make it thrive um, the more light the better with those plants ask Jake the parameters of his shrimp tank Jake, they want to know your the parameters of your uh, shrimp tank. Who's they? Uh, Jake's Aquarium. Uh, I'll get back to you on that. Yeah. I'll DM him. I really have no idea. All right, so uh, this, yeah, this is the last sword that I have here to show you guys today. Uh, this is a Marvel Queen sword, so. A couple things to note. It looks like death right now, right? It has uh, all these browning, melting leaves. So like I told you before, we're just going to pull those off. Um, I'm going to unfasten it here. This is actually two or three different plants here. So uh, let's see. I'm just going to remove these taller. As you can see, they're taller leaves, right? Um, but they're all the immersed grown. So I'm going to pull off all these older leaves here. So when they're grown immersed, they actually get this uh, marveling effect on their leaves, hence the name, right? But they don't really get that underwater. Uh, they look very similar to an Amazon sword, um, but their leaves uh, will, they get a kind of that marbling uh, effect. It's very faint though underwater. It's not as pro uh, apparent uh, in, in its immersed form. So, any advice on rosette swords or am I too late? Uh, well, we kind of went over the rosette variation, uh, which I have here um, a little bit earlier. Uh, you could go back and rewatch, but basically I'm new to the rosette sword myself, so I don't really know all of it stuff. Ew, that looks gross. Christian, don't you start. <laughs> um... So yeah, so the Marble Queen, it... it, it it doesn't really have a marbling effect underwater that's really uh, noticeable. It's mostly when it, it hits the surface of the water and starts to grow immersed. And uh, these things are tied here. You filled up all the tanks? Okay. Very nice. If I could get this dang thing off. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, so, um, you know, you just pluck off all these older leaves. And, uh, you know, it is a rather small sword, but I've actually ripped off all of the leaves from this before and had it grow back on me. So, um, so yeah, so they're, they're a hardy plant, um, even despite it, you know, losing all these bigger leaves, um, it should still do fine here. And it's a tricky plant because sometimes it does just fine and doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't lose all of its leaves like this. And other times it, it loses a lot of leaves on me. So it's tricky. I like to hold it to see what it's going to do. If it's one of those that aren't really going to melt back, I'll normally sell it, um, you know, right out the gate. But if it's uh, if it's one of those that I start seeing melting right away, then I'll hold it for a couple of weeks until it uh, sprouts back. And yeah, so that's uh, that's Marble Queen. These will actually get rather large, uh, just takes time. The leaves will really get really big on these. And uh, yeah, that's that's it on the swords. Have any single stem plants? Uh, I do actually have uh, some stem plants that may be up on the web. Do, do we have um, Pogo Erectus? We have extra? You floating it? Yeah. Okay, and uh, hurrah? Yeah, that's floating it. 
Okay. Yeah, so, um, the big guy talking over here. <laughs> so, um, I bought a bunch of stem plants within the last couple of weeks, uh, trying to really get the stem plants back up on the website. I just got a bunch in that I had originally lost when we moved in here. So a lot of these, I'm waiting for them to grow back in, fill back in, and, um, you know, really be to the right. What are you looking for? Pen and paper. Pen and paper? Oh. Um, oh, you know what I forgot? What? Can you go upstairs on the, uh, next to the stove? There's a shirt there. Not. Yeah, I forgot. The, I, I forgot. I want. I wanted to. I wanted to throw on the shirt so you guys could see the uh, the shirt idea that I'm working with here. And um, let's see. Let's see. I'll scroll up here on the chat, see what people are saying. What's a good starting plant for a beginner? Jenny Lee replies, Crip Parva, Broadleaf Sag, Java Fern, Anubis are good beginner plants. Yeah, so those are all good beginner plants. Um, you could also try Water Sprite, Water Wisteria. Julie says, how do you order? You can go to the website and you can order through there. Um, <clears throat> so... This is this is the shirt that we had made in case you guys missed the other live stream. Got plants. Got plants. Hashtag got plants. So what I'm gonna do on this shirt, actually I wanna change it. I'm gonna make the O the um, water drop. And that's part of the logo. And then the A, I'm gonna make the um, A from the vital formula that has the leaf in it. And that'll be on the front. But um, and and I'm gonna remove the black border. Uh, but yeah, what do you guys think? Got plants? And on the back, I'll probably put our regular logo. Like I put all this stuff because this is like my advertiser shirt. Um, but I'll probably just put like the logo, maybe like h2oplants.com on the back. But um, yeah, that's it. I'm, I probably won't put all this other stuff on it. This is gonna be the first first shirt I think that we'll put up on the website. I'm thinking about doing a pre-order though, and uh, allowing people to pre-order for about a week, and then um, we'll take whoever pre-ordered for a week. I'll order those, and that'll be it on that that particular run. I gave you your paper, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what do you guys think of the got plants? I dig it. Will it come in black? Uh, well, let's 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 uh, figure out. Is is white a good color? What other colors? Jasmine wants one. White is a wonderful color. I like the white because it really like stands out the uh, the green and the blues. Um, I was considering gray, black. I don't know if like a regular color like a blue or a red would work. Maybe like a yellow. What's that? That's this is petite. That's petite. This is regular nana. Okay. Floyd loves it. Nice. Got some loves on uh, some stuff. Flavio not working. What's not working? Is the stream not working for you? So yeah. So that's a that's a shirt idea. Got a couple other shirts. One on uh, one uh. Your boy in the is in the house. Nice, Clark. Um, one other shirt idea that I, I'm working on is um, some people keep their money in the, in a bank. I keep mine in my tank. Well, I want to make that one. What's up, JW? I like the white one too. I'd I'd buy uh, I'd buy a light blue one too. Okay, gray, black, dark green would be my jam. Okay, Jake. Jake should do a front bun. A front bun? Yeah. Mess here. Yeah, do a front bun. Do a unicorn. <laughs> I, 
Uh, Kyle says, no white. I can't do white shirts. Hook it up with like a heather gray. What's a heather gray or black? I'll do a gray. So we'll do a gray. We'll do a black. We'll do a white. Baby yellow? No? Pink for the girls? Should I do a pink shirt? Like a salmon? No? Go for, I mean, go for it. You have more girls than guys ordering plants. This is true. I do have more girls that order plants than guys. My fish just love me for my food. That's another good one. Laura says she likes gray. Floyd says blue question mark maybe like a light blue like a really like faint baby blue yeah like a baby blue because it can't be like a dark blue because then the logo won't show up at all uh sweaters well sweaters maybe towards when we enter winter we'll uh we'll do like a sweater line of it had the gray is like a light and medium gray okay yeah i do pink i do like a like a subtle pink like like lighter than this shirt this is like a maroon type color but like a very subtle pink maybe because the logos are such a dark color like if I did a dark shirt you it really w would clash so I got to do like a lighter color shirts so like very summery colors maybe like an orangey oh here's my tester is looking all over for this light blue, blue is cool all right so we'll, so I'll, I'll uh I'll definitely do that. I'll, I'll do a couple different light like, colors. Black. I don't know how black's gonna do. I, I, I pastel purple. I could do that. I'll pick. I'll pick five colors. We'll pick five colors. We'll do white, which I, I, I guarantee you, this is the thing, right? Nobody's gonna order white. Maybe like a handful of people. All the other colors are gonna be the most popular. Meanwhile, I like it in white. So. I'll make white. Mm. Um, Biggie asks, uh, how did I get Margaret, uh, to wear it? Um, it was nice of her to put it on. Um, yeah, well, I asked her. I said, baby, put the shirt on. You gotta, you gotta be my walking billboard, and she did it. The rack is looking good. The rack ain't even done yet. Well, this weekend. This weekend, we're going to be, uh, well... Either me or if Clark comes, Clark may help. It depends on when I try and get this thing done. Um, but yeah, we're gonna I'm gonna try and do the two middle racks, and then uh, I gotta start drilling the tanks. So I ordered the drill kit with the overflow, and um, and the bulkheads to try out on one tank. I want to test it out, see how it works with the filter that I got, or the uh, pump that I got, and uh, we'll go from there and see how see how it all works. Hopefully. What's that? Nana. More regular Nana? They were all out. Nana's like really yeah, difficult. Really yeah, Nana's a really difficult one to uh, to get. I think I can make it on July 3rd in the afternoon. Will that work, Clark? Just let me know. Um, I'm probably gonna try Sunday if I if I can. I'm gonna try Sunday to, to see if I can get it. You gonna do it through Teespring? So I was thinking about doing it through Teespring, but um, I don't know if I wanna do it through Teespring. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a pre-order on my site so basically, you'll be able to pre-order. Um, it will take, so I'll, I'll do a week, right? So people can order the shirt in whatever colors for a week. After the week I close it, I submit that order to my uh, to my, my my supplier. They make it, they ship it, and then I, um, then I ship it out to you guys. But that's probably gonna take, after the week of pre-order, it'll probably take two or three weeks for me to send it out to you guys because it'll take a week for them to do it, a week and a half. I'll have it after that week and a half to two weeks, and then I'll ship it out as soon as I get it. Thought Joey was going to help with the racks. Yeah, well, Joey, uh, yeah. Jo Joey, uh, Joey came, but he was not in the, um, 
Uh, what's a, what's a good what's a good way of putting it? He wanted to work. Yeah, he didn't want to work. Let's just put it that way. He didn't want to work. <laughs> How are the uh, reticulated uh, flying foxes doing? Have you seen them eat a lot of BBA? So the BBA has cut down a lot in the tank, but I do also have Siamese algae uh, Siamese algae eaters in there, so I don't know if they're actually eating it or not. I do see them nibbling on stuff from time to time, so uh, I think they're they are definitely eating stuff. I just don't know if they are as effective. We'll see though. I'm gonna give them a little more time, but the BBA pretty much is almost all disappeared. Now uh, now we're dosing the tank for cyano because there was uh, a little bit of a cyano outbreak that happened from the other tank that transferred over. So, um, so yeah, so that's what we're doing there. Are these all the same? Yeah, you know how you can tell? No. You see how the triangle leaf, or the spade leaf? Mm -hmm. This is the only one that has the spade leaf. Okay. What type is it? Uh, Hostifolia. You should do a video on rhizome plants. Well, we already actually did cover Anubis. That's one type of rhizome plant. You could go back on YouTube and Facebook. That was, I think, did, we did that one first, right? Or no, was it Crips? Crips was first. Crips was first, Anubis was second. This is our third one on swords, right? I wanted to do bulb plants, but I decided to do swords instead because I had some swords. And typically, I don't have a lot of swords in stock, so. Yeah. Alright, so we're gonna make this like another 20 minutes, guys, just so you know. We're gonna end this a little bit early because I need to still go upstairs and uh, work on the obelisk tank. I have tacos, very nice. What sizes? I'm probably going to do up from uh, small on guys, so small all the way up to 2x. And then on women, we'll probably do small or extra small all the way up to 2x as well because I have a lot of uh, women uh, viewers and I know that sizes can range a lot on that. I think when I, as far as the pre-orders go for plant pack though, uh, a lot of guy, a lot of the guys are like large and up. Nobody's really a medium or smaller. So, uh, so I know Bristol plecos eat Amazon swords. Do they eat the others as well? Yeah, most likely they would. Julie says went to site. Sorry, they uh, were all sold out. When you get more of the. Wedgie red, not sure of the spelling. Is it, was it a sword that I was talking about today, Julie? That you're talking about? What's up, Vicky? How's it going? Uh, oh, stem plants. Oh, are you looking for Ludwigia red, maybe? That could be. That could be it. Single stem. Yeah, so some stem plants, they're not up on the site as of right now. Um, Jake's doing inventory right now, and then I'm going to go through and count up a couple other things. Some stem plants that may not be on the site yet may show up. Uh, if you actually go to the Coming Soon page, I updated that uh, with all of the plants that I got in in the last week. So there's a ton of, I think I added like 30 new stem plants that I didn't have before at all, and as well as getting some that I lost during the move originally. So um, we got all that. And um, so some stem plants will be in stock uh, either later on tonight and or tomorrow. Um, but if there was uh, particular plants that you're looking for, you could go to the website and put in your email under the notify me when they're sold out. And as soon as I update the website with that particular plant, you'll get shot an email saying that they're in stock. So you can check them out. Um, what's up, uh, Akasha? Uh, do you have water wisteria in stock in floating plants like red roof floaters? So I don't have any red roof floaters yet. Uh, I was actually supposed to order them, but um, I ordered other plants instead. I'm going to order them probably after this weekend. I'll have them for next week sometime. Uh, water wisteria, I'll probably have a few. I may even have water wisteria variegated, which is a white version of water wisteria. 
um, which is really cool. You have water in the tank behind you? No, there's no water in that tank. Uh, that tank's going to be our uh, uh, taking picture tank that I'm going to be setting up here very shortly. Lancelot? I'm glad you're doing uh, ex, uh, extra small. All right, nice. Yeah, I figured um, just based on the plant pack pre-orders or the people that sign up for plant pack, when you when you chose what shirt you wanted there, I kind of got an idea. So I have a lot of – the women range from extra small to like XL, which is like, okay, that's fine. But then all the guys, it's like large and up. And I'm like, damn, am I the only small guy around here? <laughs> like, ugh. I'm like, I got a lot of fluffies. Like me. Like, like Jake. Which is fine, but um, I'm, I was just surprised. I'm like, damn, I don't have any, like, it was all large and up. I'm like, damn. Just a small guy, I guess. How are the rare plants growing or need to get more in? So I got a, a lot of them growing. They're going great. Uh, I'm pumping CO2 right now in these tanks. They're, they're going pretty well. Um, so as soon as I think that the, the tanks are as clear as they can be as far as algae and bladder wart that I'm having issues with, um, we'll, uh, they'll be up on the website. So, Can you force a sword to bloom like with light and trimming or additional phosphorus? So there are tricks. I've never done it. I know you probably could, um, but I've never done it. So I would I would say to research that a bit more um there's probably people out there that have done it more what does a nangi look like? looks like big nana so, like, but longer leaves let me see don't break shit jake don't break everything yeah this is nangi um why didn't you enter the aquascaping contest because I didn't want to compete against Kevin Kelly. No, I just didn't want to. I wanted to enjoy the show. I, I, I am my own worst critic, and I think anything I do sucks. But I love watching what other people do. So, remember me from Snapchat? Sure. I'm an X, I'm an XL. Nice, Ruru. If you have variegated water wisteria, I need some. Yep, 2XL. Nice. Uh, I'm setting up my 75... Uh, my first 75 gallon any advice on good lighting at a good price point I have my eye on a t5 setup for 106 uh, if you want highlighting your pr your best bet is fluorescent fluorescent to be cost effective um, if you're just going for low light you could do LEDs it depends I like LEDs I blame these tacos yeah, I blame those tacos too I kind of want to try t5 um Let's see. What's your take on liquid CO2? Uh, liquid CO2 is okay. Um, it, long term solution, it, it's really not. I mean, it'll work for a while, but uh, there's nothing that's going to ever replace uh, direct injection. Uh, Matthew says, okay, real question. Do you have hoes in different area codes? Jake, do you have hoes in different area codes? I don't know. Is she? I don't think so. Yes. Whoa! I think she is watching. Oh, she's a oh dude, she gonna get you. Oh, you sleep it on the couch tonight. Dirty. Uh, laugh out loud. Awesome to see you at Reef. Thanks for the info and the coupon. You're welcome. Yeah, for anybody that didn't know, if you came up to me at Reef of Palooza, I gave you a coupon code. What's the Anubis for the long leaves that are wavy? Kind of Minima. Okay. You're welcome, Aubrey. Uh, but also, Aubrey, with that said, though, uh, CO2 is not needed. Um, if you if you do CO2, um, just you know, beware there there could be issues and all that. Um, but it's not needed for plant growth. I just I I just have it because I want to try and grow things as fast as possible, and I have rare stuff. But if you do basic plants, you don't need CO2. With that said, I will be do doing CO2 on the uh, obelisk tank. Oh, you yeah, I'm going to actually get the fluval. No, no, I'm just going to do it. Why? Go paintball. Yeah? Yeah. Fluval sucks. Huh. Unless you get, like, a regulator that's good for that, like, those small canisters. Yeah? 
because the, the regulator that comes with it, you, you'll turn it right. to a certain amount of bubbles per second, but throughout the day it will gradually go down, which doesn't make sense because it's still open. Why would it go down? So you'll get inconsistent CO2 levels. True. How do plants in the wild get uh, CO2? Well, so CO2 is something that we inject to kind of just give them an abundance of nutrients and uh, abundance of fuel basically to grow. Um, as far as getting it in the wild, I, I guess they would get it through fish respiration and, and other things. You know, plants uh, excrete uh, CO2 at night. Um, and absorb oxygen during the day uh, or I mean I'm sorry they absorb CO2 during the day release CO2 at night um, when there's no light so um, you know it could be that I'm not, I'm not really entirely sure how they would get CO2 I guess it's just nature nature has a weird way of making things work lots of lots of uh, water changes What's your favorite liquid fertilizer? Well, I use my own, uh, well, I would always say my own. I use dry ferts, um, but my all-in-one fertilizer that I sell Vital is very similar to that. So it works quite well. Just the same thing we looked before. It's close to, to the dry ferts. There's, there's some differences. The problem with, with that is like, you, because you know, basically like Vital's for the people that don't want to sit there and have to worry about the chemistry of the tank and figuring out every little metric. Mm -hmm. um, that's what Vital's for. No, I'm confused. What? No, never mind. There's two different plants close together. Oh. Hey, man, I'm a noob. I'm just soaking up the good info. Oh, welcome. I'm sorry, I'm so tired. <laughs> Shut up, Jake. Where's my ladder? My ladder's in the uh, in the shed, right? What's your take on API Leaf Zone? I'm not really a fan of it. If, if I was gonna use anything um, outside my product, I'd use Seacom. So I gotta I gotta go upstairs after the live stream and I gotta hang a light for the um, for the uh, obelisk tank. Uh, when using liquid CO two, I've heard of in uh, you're inconsistent if you wait. When using liquid CO two, I've heard of you're inconsistent. If you're inconsistent. Uh, it will throw off your parameters and kill your fish. Example, go on vacation. Um, I wouldn't say it would kill your fish. The other way it's going to kill your fish is if you overdose. Um, but what's going to happen is, say you're dosing uh, liquid CO2 for months, months, months. You're on top of it every moment. All of a sudden, you go away for a week. That stops. You're most likely going to get an algae bloom because your tank was so reliant on that. What's up, Havoc? says how how's it going been a bit since i caught you live well welcome havoc yeah we're actually live streaming a little later tonight we got about 10 more minutes and i'm gonna end the live stream um but yeah welcome havoc good to have you back will vital affect my nitrate level to where i may need to do water changes more often so um it could if you overdose it um if you depending on the size of your tank you use a little bit of a little bit of it uh each time and gradually work your way up to higher and higher dosages um, until you start realizing like algae problems or anything like that. Uh, but typically, it's good, and uh, it won't it won't do it as long as you're not dumping the whole bottle in there. Doug says LED versus T5 uh, high output dots. Uh, I like LEDs. I use all LEDs, but they are rather uh, expensive compared to fluorescents. Going to be starting a 75 gallon tank. What are some good LED lights that provide highlights with 18 inches of depth? So, Troy, um, really, your best bet is going to be uh, what are those called? TMC grow beams? Is that what it is? Yeah. T TMC grow beams. Um, they're pendant lights that you can get a couple of them in a row, and those could be over the tank. And uh, those will give you a pretty good penetration of light down to the bottom of your tank. 
Um, highlight is going to be really tough on anything above like a 40 gallon tank without spending a little bit of money. So I typically tell people you want to do like a really elaborate um, scape or something like that. Uh, use a 40 gallon. <laughs> I got some videos of Joey in uh, Times Square and he just messages me and says, Creep. <laughs> I spotted a wild Joey in Times Square. So, it's Scrib. <sighs> I don't know why I'm yawning so much. Instagram is about to go down here in a minute. We'll be on uh, Facebook and YouTube for about another ten, uh, five minutes or so. So if you guys want to hop on over to Facebook and YouTube and check out the stream there, you're more than welcome to. So let's see. You're welcome, Troy. Hope it helps. Um, and there's no there's no shame in going uh, medium light or low light on a, on a big tank. Um, I did the 55 gallon with all basic plants, so that way I could show like what you can do with basic stuff. Later, Aqua Apprentice, and thank you, uh, Probass. Just make sure you switch on over to Facebook or YouTube for the last five minutes or so, and, uh, and I'll see you guys over there. Any other question, guys? Any Anything having to do with swords or anything else? Feel free to ask. What's up, LRB Aquatics? And there goes Instagram. All of the Aponge Tons in this tank is pooping in right? And there's some Madagascar lace. Yeah. Okay. And some you you Def I think is the name. What's the difference? What's the difference between what? Uh, you'll you'll see a significant difference. Uh, oh, Jenny messaged me. Jenny, are you still in here? Can I make you a mod from here? No, I can't. I gotta make you a mod from in there. Okay. Jenny, are you still in the chat? Yeah. Why is my phone vibrating like crazy? What well, goes on here? Yo, I was gonna fight you last night. You were gonna fight me last night? Yeah. Cause I shared the stream, and then like ten minutes after I shared the stream, you're like, "Oh, finally, dude." Cause it didn't show up right away. How's that my fault? Oh, it's your fault. Why is my phone vibrating like crazy? Um, how are the new algae eating fish doing? They're doing pretty good. Um, I haven't noticed them like any significant difference in the tank yet, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, with them, but uh, so far so good. The Boridianus is the one with the crinkly teeth, right? Oh, Joey's in here. What's up, Joey? Joey, I'm just about to leave. You're 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 messing up, bro. You're messing me. Um, I feel really bad. Asking something off topic, but I really don't know where to go. I have a weird disease in my tank that only seems to be hurting dwarf garamis. The hole turned white. I don't know what that is. Um, should I tr trim my sword of old growth? Um, if it's if the leaves are turning any sort of weird colors or uh, or gaining algae, yes, trim them off. And now black. Black and white after medication. Um, LRB. I honestly don't know diseases that well um, with fish like that. Not, I'm not too well versed. So I don't want to give you um, ill advice. 
what I would say to do is take the questions to the Facebook groups um, that, that, that are out there. There's plenty of um, fish related Facebook groups, both planted and non. Um, and I would uh, post up their pictures along with the description that you just gave me and ask people because there's people far better suited to um, to answer those questions. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah, dose that with cyano. Or with the uh, cyano fix. Um, Jasmine says, Jake, do you ever not want to fight Justin? Whoa, I'm mess you up. Don't worry, after this, Jake's going in the tank. No, you're going in the tank, bro. No, I hope you fall off the stairs again. Yeah, you know, Christian came down the stairs and hit his head. I felt so bad. Did you really? Yeah, because he's so tall. You didn't warn him? Yeah. I, well, no, I didn't, I didn't warn him. I'm an asshole. I hope he never comes over again. Oh shoot, somebody trying to bait and switch on the forums. What do you mean? Um, any tips on dealing with blue green algae? Are you meaning cyano? Because we're actually dealing with it now. Um, what are we using? Semi pure? Where's the where's the box? Because we actually have some cyanobacteria in the tanks. Well, chemi clean. Chemi aquarium treatment. Chemi clean. Amazon it. It was like, I ordered the one for $22 because there was one for $12, but it was $10 for shipping if I wanted to get it shipped here in two days. I'm like, I'm just going to order the $22 one, and then I got it today because it, it, it was same-day delivery on it, so that was awesome. Why, why is my phone vibrating like crazy? Oh. What? The charger? Yeah. No wonder why. <laughs> Stupid. Like, why is this thing vibrating like crazy? Why after? Why after what? What did I say? I don't even remember. So yeah, so uh, cyano, uh, I think, was actually caused in my tank because of um, I was feeding spirulina. Spirulina is um, the end result of cyano from the research that I've done on it. Um, so when you feed the spirulina and you don't clean your tank, like like I wasn't cleaning the 55, the 55 was just sitting out there doing whatever it was doing. Um, I think it actually caused the cyanobacteria itself um, after a while. So, keep a clean tank. Tango. What's up, uh, Mr. Karate Cat Man? That's a cool name. Jake, why can't you have cool names like that? It's better than eating two old plants. Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, Jasmine's trolling you, Jake. Why would she say? She says that I said that Jake's going in the tank after this. She says that she wanted to see that. Oh yeah. I'll throw I'll throw him in the tank. Do you want me to throw him in the tank? I'll make sure we go live stream again. Oh, stop. <laughs> she she left last night because of me. How long do you run the lights on your sword tank? So all my tanks are on for eight hours, or the lights are all on for eight hours. Um, the swords tank do get less CO2 and uh, less ferts than the, the other two higher tech stems and stuff like that and that's just because they don't need um, a whole lot of liquid stuff they need uh, more of a uh, root fertilizer well my fish are going on a strict new diet spear spirulina free well it, it's not spirulina won't cause cyanobacteria but it's a form of it and I think I got it in my tank just because I was feeding so much of the spirulina food and I wasn't doing water changes or cleaning at all and uh, the phosphates probably built up after a while and that's typically from what I read the cause is phosphates 
Um, so it's best just, you know, do your do your regular maintenance. I didn't do crap, so. Yeah. You done with that tank? What? You, you done with that tank? Yeah. yeah. You're still counting stuff? Yeah. Jake's just talking smack. All right, guys, two more minutes, and then uh, I'm going to be heading out for the night. Minutes, no. So what is the difference? What? Between the two Japanese towns. Which Japanese towns? There's only two that are in the tank. There's three in the tank. There's three? So yeah. There's two. They all, no, all those with the clear leaves that look like that are all the same. There's none that. They're, they're all different looking. You're not going to be able to tell. So next week, should we do, what should we do? Should we either do bulb plants? Oh, so like yeah. red tiger lotus, the Pajatons. Or should we do... What else is there to do? Floating plants. Yeah, we could do floating plants. Could do floating plants. Me neither. If I do, uh, if I do much water changes on low tech, it fluctuates my CO2 and BBI. Break. Damn. Justin, I will PM you about a, a 150 gallon. Damn. 150 gallon. Joe, you said no, about 150 gallon. All right, guys, I'm gonna be heading out. Uh, thank you all for checking out the live stream. Uh, Sunday, maybe we'll be live streaming. Oh, so um, when you place an order, I haven't decided for this weekend because the post office is closed Tuesday. So if I ship out on Monday, right? If I ship out on Monday, what was it? Ship out on Monday, it would get held there a day and then continue on its uh, route. So basically like a regular one day order would take two days or it would take three days or four days, whatever it was. Um, but the, whatchamacallit? If I ship out on Wednesday, then you guys might get it within a couple of days. I don't know how. I don't know how July 4th is going to work. I guess we're just going to have to see what happens. But, um, but yeah. Um, I think that's it, guys. Well, thank you for hanging out. Um, we'll see you guys on Sunday if there's a live stream, which there should be. Maybe we'll try something a little different. Later, guys. Peace.